Some drivers will say that a woman doesn't belong in a Grand National race car. But this woman just doesn't agree. A woman, to me, is John Teal and you and a lover, and their physical makeup isn't for this sort of thing. You know, what does she think she's doing? Who does she think she is? She'll never make 600 miles. A woman can't do that. And she pulls up on Elio Castroneta as Danica Patrick will win at Motegi. I always wondered what it would be like. You got all these men, and, uh, and you show up and you're the only woman in the field. It has to be an odd feeling. I don't think any woman is going to make a good race driver. What's that you say? A woman going to drive in the 500? They just simply did not want a woman to break into that field. I just go to race. Yeah. Um, that's me. Like, uh, of course I can't get away, away from the girl thing. I have hair. She's pulling away. She's pulling away. She's pulling away. Joan Hanalong wins the Snowball Derby. And Natalie Decker is hanging in up top, going for the lead. On board with Decker, trying to move to the point. It'd be like, you know, some unbelievably fast woman going out for wide receiver on the New York Giants. I mean, the guys would go nuts. The general idea was women don't have the strength, the endurance, the emotional stability. Women are going to endanger our lives. The only way that I could put a stop to this was on the racetrack. Haley Deegan to the lead. Can she maintain it through three and four? Here comes Rouse back. No. Score one for the ladies. Haley Deegan wins in Meridian. Fantastic to have you stay in my life right here, dude. It was perfect, and we did it. We did it. We won. Wow. In a sport with as many female viewers as male viewers, a glaring problem still presents itself. In the 75 years of NASCAR, in hundreds, dare I say thousands of drivers, there has never really truly been a successful female in the sport when it comes to on-track accolades. Though they've come close, no woman has ever won in the top three series in NASCAR. As she works her way off at turn four, checkered flag out, Gracie Trotter picks up the win at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Why is that? Let's talk about it. For decades, NASCAR has been a male-dominated sport. However, there have been some pioneering women who have broken through the gender barrier and made a name for themselves in this high-speed world. One of the earliest female NASCAR drivers was Louise Smith, who started racing in 1949. Louise's driving had earned her a reputation with the local sheriff, but she'd never been to a racetrack in her life. Louise ran her first race with only the sketchiest understanding of the rules. I didn't even know what the checker flag meant. When she went out there, the drivers did not like it. They didn't like a woman out there on a the racetrack. Oh yeah, I've been knocked out a few times. <laughs> Sometime it'd get kind of ornery, but they didn't bother me too much. I got where I was pretty good. In fact, they said I was the best on the track. Just stay out of my way that if I got close enough to bump them, you cut them and flip. If you hit them just right, they're gone. Another trailblazer was Janet Guthrie, who was the first woman to race in both the Daytona 500 and the Indianapolis 500. She faced a lot of discrimination and skepticism from male drivers and fans, but she persevered and proved her skills on the track. We had the biggest day of single ticket sales that Charlotte Motor Speedway has ever had before or since because of the tremendous interest in Janet Guthrie. Women saw this as a historic moment 
for the women's movement. They weren't race fans. They wanted to see what this woman could do in a total all-male world. Janice, some of the other drivers said that uh, one of their worries was that you weren't physically uh, up to manhandling a 3,700-pound car. Well, that's, that's really just nonsense. You don't have to carry it. You just sit in it. And I, although it is certainly tiring, as anyone here will tell you, it is not beyond the capability of any reasonably fit woman. I wasn't doing it for women or for the women's cause. Like any racing driver, I was doing it for myself. 600 miles of Charlotte's a tough race. You would look at her and you'd say, are you sure you can make 600 miles at uh, Charlotte? There is Janet Guthrie, who is in 23rd position in the race. Been a lot of pressure on Janet Guthrie over here, a lot of publicity and so forth, but she's standing up to it very well. She made the whole distance. Not only that, but she finished 15. That was a pretty astounding feat, what she did that day. You know, this has got to go down to me, almost like Lindbergh going across the Atlantic, because it had just never been done before. And she did it. She proved that you didn't have to have a 19-inch neck to be a race driver. Of course women could do these things. And why in the world did anyone ever think otherwise? Despite the achievements of women like Smith and Guthrie, female drivers still face significant challenges in NASCAR. One of the biggest obstacles is funding. It's expensive to race in NASCAR, and female drivers often struggle to find sponsors and financial support. Sponsors are key in getting ahead in the sport because everything a driver needs is so expensive. I've had to learn how to be a, become a businesswoman in order to be a race car driver. It's thousands and thousands of dollars just to practice. So not only was, you know, there were years where I had barely any sponsorship. I only got to race a couple times a year. I didn't get to practice. So for me to be in a car two to three times a year when other people are in the car every single weekend practicing during the week because they have that financial backing, it really makes you doubt yourself and doubt your ability. Another challenge is that the perception that women are not as skilled or as tough as men. This stereotype can be hard to overcome, especially when female drivers are constantly compared to men and expected to perform at the same level. Many female drivers have spoken out about the sexism they face in the sport, but some take it in stride and use it to their advantage. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to avoid the saying sex sells, but, um, you know, I think you have to use all of your attributes. I think you have to use, um, if you're funny, play it up. You know, if you're daredevil, you know, show it off. But it all has to be backed up by ability. Is she good? Hell yeah, she's good. Congratulations on your first top five. I'm so happy I got to do it with you guys in an SW. That's pretty awesome. Big news, she has crashed through a speed and gender barrier. Danica Patrick, who won the top position in NASCAR's upcoming big race, the Daytona 500. I haven't heard cheering like this at this racetrack since Dale Jr. took the lead at one time or another. This is a really, really big deal. We'll know in about a mile, can she become the first female to lead a lap in the Daytona 500? Hamlin coming hard on the inside now with Kenseth. Under green, fans to their feet, to the line. She's done it. Danica Patrick has led the Indy 500 and the Daytona 500. And these fans were cheering. They were on their feet. And in sixth place, Johanna Long in the 70. She goes through your screen right there. She is doing well tonight. We're checking a tweet that was sent in by Jeff Burton. Here it is. Deserves a shot in a top 10 car. No disrespect to her current team. They just don't have the funding that the big teams have. As we see now, Johanna Long getting by Denny Hamlin, driving her way to the front. I believe that puts her in fifth. It seems that all the anybody who dislikes Danica is like rooting for you. It's like that that her presence has created new fans for you. Uh, I don't know her. Uh, I do know that she's uh, young. I don't know where what she has done before this, but she's doing a great job. She's a really young girl, and um, she just needs to keep at it. Well, rule number one in stock car racing is learn how to wreck someone without wrecking yourself. Uh, now we can get to the uh, the other stuff. 
hook to the right. Yeah, at that point right there is whenever you should just, as a driver, realize that this is a spin, lock it down, and you can come get four tires. And that's uh, the kind of things that you'll have to learn with these cars. Three wide. that truck. Kenny's Great. always a little bit excited. No, she's, that's, she's not happy right now with the window net either. Maybe it's just the fact that they're females and the spotlight shines a little bit brighter on their mistakes. But man, it does seem like there's a lot more mistakes. With that aside, female NASCAR drivers continue to push the boundaries and challenge stereotypes in this male dominated sport. As more women enter the world of NASCAR, they are changing the face of racing and inspiring a new generation of female drivers to follow in their footsteps. The biggest female star in NASCAR right now and for years to come is without a doubt, Haley Deegan. I started racing when I was eight years old, uh, off-road trucks with my dad when he made the transition from freestyle motocross to off-road truck racing. For my eighth birthday, my parents got me a truck, so I like begged them. Not the typical thing a seven, eight-year-old girl wants, but <laughs> I wanted one. Winning in the K&N series, and now competing full-time in the truck series for Thor Sport, she has all the makings to become the biggest female NASCAR star of all time. Course of the night, he started at the very back, as you see Lawless Allen and Haley Deegan they both have uh, some words. finished inside the top 20 events, 19th and 20th for Deegan and, and Allen. I know it may be fun to pick at these drivers' mistakes sometimes, but the sport needs these women. Whether you think Haley Deegan is the future or whether you think she's absolute trash, people need to stop preying on these women's downfalls. And yes, just like in every other aspect of getting started in NASCAR, it's also completely unfair for women too. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that I don't think Johanna Long would have made the playoffs every single year and won several races if she was in the 10 car instead of Danica. But I'm also not gonna pretend that Johanna Long could have sold tickets and acquired sponsorship like Danica either. The number 13 Ford Performance Pro from Temecula, California, Haley Deegan! 
I'm not gonna pretend that Deegan is even a top 10 driver in the truck series. Probably not even top 20. But man, I genuinely hope she turns out to be either her or any of these other young women for the sake of the sport, for the sake of women, and for the sake of our daughters so they can have someone to look up to. But you're never gonna beat me Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy Bloody hands stain from the people who deceive me Muddy hands break through the chains, go free me Looking for change, looking for pain Pulling a mob, pushing a train I'll never stop, stick to a lane Pick up the pieces and go rearrange yeah. I'll be the best above all the rest Put me to the test yeah. Expect nothing less, you check as I'm chess, what's happening next year? He got the venom, a tangible weapon, no coming in second, this life is a lesson He got a new engine from pain, that's a blessing, new focus, no guessing, just bold an obsession All in his possession, you got the retention, I'll leave it